uh, blending stops. In this video, we'll take a look at when it's appropriate to use these and whether or not you need to even use them at all. Do you really need to use blending stops? The answer is yes and no. It all depends on the subject that you're drawing and the surface texture of the paper that you're drawing on. The fact of the matter is beginning artists tend to overuse blending stops, which makes drawings look unfinished and sometimes even dirty. And of course, this is not something that we want. In fact, there are techniques out there that you can use with graphite that will create smooth transitions in tone and value without even using a blending stop. And we'll cover those a little bit later in this video. But first, let's explore some of the reasons why you would use a blending stop. Why you would use a blending stop? There are many times when you want to use a blending stop. For example, in this drawing lesson where we're drawing feet, using a blending stop allows us to create smooth transitions of tone and actually mimic the texture of skin. The same is true in this portrait drawing lesson from The Guide to Graphite. In this lesson, we're wanting to create the smooth texture of skin when we draw the face, so it makes sense to use a blending stop. And in this drawing from Portrait Drawing the Smart Way, a blending stop creates a texture that mimics that of skin. Ah, but there's exceptions to every rule. In this drawing, we again created a portrait, but because the paper was so smooth, a blending stump wasn't necessary. We were able to create smooth transitions simply by adjusting the pressure placed on the pencil. So besides the texture of the subject, the texture of the paper is also important. In fact, sometimes we choose specific papers in order to capture specific textures in our drawings. For example, in this drawing, we worked on charcoal paper, which features a laid textured pattern. This texture helped to create the illusion of leaves, bushes, and trees. No blending stumps necessary. We did the same thing here in this drawing. The texture of the charcoal paper combined with the graphite applications helped to create the textures we were after. Ah, but there are exceptions to every rule. In this lesson, we drew a horse with a mechanical pencil, and we worked on smooth bristle paper. The smoothness of the paper, or the lack of tooth, allowed us to create smooth transitions of tone and value without using a blending stump at all. In fact, using a mechanical pencil, we were able to create smooth transitions of tone and value just by adjusting the pressure placed on the pencil. In our current live lesson series, we're drawing an elephant in the jungle. Here again, we have leaves, trees, and bushes, but charcoal paper would be a poor choice since the texture of the elephant is a bit smoother than the trees, bushes, leaves around it. Instead, we're working on Stonehenge paper, which is 100% cotton. This paper is very soft, and as a result, we're able to get the texture that we need without using a blending stump. So how do we do this? How do we get these smooth transitions of tone and value without using a blending stump? Well, the answer is a technique that I like to call circling. Now, circling is a technique where you apply the graphite using circular strokes. By making small circular strokes with the graphite, we can create smooth transitions of tone without using a blending stop. Now, it's important to note, we're not making circles. Instead, we're making circular strokes. This creates an even application of graphite on the surface. So should you use blending stops when you draw? Absolutely, but do so when it's appropriate. Remember, before you reach for that blending stop, consider the surface texture of the subject that you're drawing and the surface texture of the paper that you're working on. Doing so will ensure that your drawings are more representational and realistic and will make you a better artist. Mm -hmm. 